Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. I want to give you an update on the growth rates of cases of coronavirus in various countries around the world so that we can see how we can learn about the responses that different countries have made in order to take sort of an aggregate or the best cases that other countries, um, methods that other countries have been using um, and so that they can be applied in our own countries um, by our government. So the first thing is I'll be discussing a lot of so-called semi-log plots where the, the vertical axis is logarithmic and it basically shows the, uh, you know, plotted against a number of days. Um, and that way it linearizes the curves and you can compare growth rates a lot easier that way. Um, a couple of interesting points to note is that um, it seems the, the data is preliminary. There's not a lot of data, but it looks like in some of the warmer countries of the world, the growth rates are lower, um, something like 14% increase per day as opposed to 28% increase per day, um, or 22% or rather, and 35% um, in some of the highest countries. So I, uh, I'll show you all of this data and give you some really good links on websites so you can look at it yourself. Please pass it on to people that are statistically or mathematically minded to, and you know, certainly government and th um, authorities, et cetera, that are making policy for this virus. Um, in the meantime, you know, on a personal note, I take this stuff, I put this thing, it's antiviral, it's called, it's Echinacea purpurea. I put a, about a milliliter in my water bottle uh, once a day. Um, you know, one of the best things you can do as an individual, apart from following the social distances things. And in Canada, we've been told to basically stay in place, stay in our house, um, no schools, uh, nothing. Um, government's starting to treat it seriously, but there's still a lot of things that they, they can do. But anyway, I take, I take one milliliter of this in my water bottle each day, and also I take vitamins, and I'm going to start jogging. Um, I'll, I'll start jogging, um, trying to improve my, uh, you know, boost my Im immunity, my immune system. You know, we all have to keep uh, sane, um, you know, being cooped up in our, uh, in our homes. So let me get right into the uh, data that I want to show you today. Um, okay, so, so I'll come to this plot. Uh, well, let me explain it now since it's up. Okay, so we've got different countries, Italy, Austria, Canada, France, Germany, etc. here. It's a semi-log plot. So we've just got the lag in days behind Italy. Everything's relative to what's going on in Italy. So you can, you can um, see the, you know, the details on what's happening in Italy. And if these trends continue, then we would expect similar um, circumstances that are going on in Italy to happen in all of these other countries. Um, so it's uh, logarithmic on this axis, and it's just lag in days behind Italy. Now this data is from March 13th, it's three days ago. So you can subtract, uh, or you can add three days to each of these. So, um, so here's the Italy curve, rapid rise here, and then it follows the um, it follows an exponential because when you take the log of it, it makes a linear function from an exponential. So a line on a semi-log plot is actually exponential growth. So you can see what's going on here in Italy and they didn't test, uh, you know, something going on here to have a very, very quick rate, no testing, suddenly lots of testing done. Um, and you can see countries that are behind Italy. So um, if you look at the number of cases here in Italy, it was 17, 1,660 cases on March 13th. And I can quickly show you right now, you know, Italy's got 27,980 cases, and this is just uh, three days later. So this is, the, this is clearly the, the exponential growth 
that we can see. And if we look at countries that are following, okay, um, again, this is three days ago, so um, France is about five days away from reaching this condition here, you know, with these sort of numbers. Germany, you know, it's minus eight, but I'm adding three to this, so it's five days away. Uh, same as France from reaching these sort of numbers, um, reaching what Italy was um, three days ago. And then, so we've got these two countries. Then we have the U.S. Um, eight days away, just over a week away from reaching these sort of numbers, um, and so on. The U.K. Would be 11 days away, Switzerland 10 days away, Norway uh, 12 days away, Canada's on here about 16 days away. So, you know, I'm in Canada, so, you know, we're starting to get a number of cases in Ottawa. You know, we have 13 recorded cases in Ottawa, and you know, that means probably that there's several hundred people in Ottawa walk with the um, with the virus when you include the the asymptomatic cases. So this is a crucial plot um, showing how countries are relative to Italy, okay, which is sort of a, you know, it's the worst case outside of China. And of course, China stabilized things, it seems. So this is... Uh, on my Twitter feed at Paul H. Beckwith. Um, if you haven't read this, I highly recommend that you read this, okay? Because um, although, you know, it's a few days old now, it's got very good plots. It explains the true cases versus um, measured cases versus tested cases. You know, you may, you may hear people saying, well, 3% mortality, but 97% will survive. If it's 3%, it would be for the U.S., 1.5 times the casualties in the Civil War, 27 times World War I casualties, five times worse than the 1918 influenza, 10 times World War II cas casualties, 106 times the Vietnam casualties, etc. Okay, so those numbers are huge. Um, again, it's all about test, 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 and the Berlin startup had produced 1.4 million tests by the end of February to ship around the world. The U.S. said, no thanks, we'll make our own. Okay, I will get back to talking about climate stuff, um, you know, but mostly I'll be relating it to um, what's happening with the coronavirus now. And I tweeted out here, these are the growth rate comparisons for different countries, and there's a link here, and I'll be discussing that quite a bit. Um, just have to show you this. This is somebody in Spain, staying home in Spain day one. They filmed this video. You can see these poor cars being munched by this, this critter. <laughs> it's actually quite, quite good. Um, and so I've shown you this. This is also a very scary statistic. These are cases in South Korea and Italy by age group. Now in Italy, they're only testing the people that are getting sick. So people that have symptoms and are getting sick. And you can see the numbers in the various age groups. In South Korea, they're testing everybody, and they get this surprising number for this age group. So age 20 to 29, a lot of social interaction, a lot of people out at pubs and bars and stuff. Um, and, uh, you know, they were tested. They, were, they, were, they caught the, the, they tested positive. They got the virus, but they didn't necessarily have symptoms. They did not have symptoms. Symptoms were much, much lower, you know, something like down to here. So these are these are transmitters. They also found some surprising results that, na na namely that, um, you know, lots of these people that don't have symptoms um, are, you know, the virus is stronger in their systems and they're, you know, they're actually spreaders. They're, they're much more significant spreaders than we think. This is why it's so tough to, to stop this disease. Now, this is what I really wanted to show you, um, the growth rate. So this is a key this is a key plot and it shows you these are all warm countries so this is world confirmed cases warm countries so up here we have um, the colder countries the northern hemisphere countries we have you know italy we have spain we have the usa um, you know there's different countries and the growth rates here are very large okay this is a 38 percent daily increase um, this curve here, 
which is what Spain is on right at the moment, and Italy is close to that but dropping off a bit. If we take this curve here, the dashed line, that's a 22% daily increase rate, which is being followed by Italy now. But if we go down here to this dotted line, that's a 14% daily increase. And all of these different countries that are in warm regions, this is, this is uh, Qatar, and then this is Brazil, and we got Bahrain, Bahrain, Indonesia, Kuwait, Egypt, India, okay, Australia. All of these countries are tending to track along a 14% daily increase line. Now the, num the total numbers, this is the confirmed uh, cases, the total numbers are, you know, they're, they're up to about, this is 100, some of them maybe, are, this would be 200 on this, on a semi-log, that would be 300 and so on. So they're, you know, a couple hundred, so there's not a lot of data there, but they seem to be tracking this 14% line. Some of them are pulling up from it. So this is, uh, you know, extremely interesting. This would suggest that there is a seasonal component and I'll talk about that. There's been a few papers published. I'll talk about that more. But I just want to show you, um, they also do this plot on a per capita basis. So per million, the number of cases per million inhabitants. And it looks very similar uh, to, uh, to the, th this is just this data here. Um, it just lets you look at it in a different way. Um, this is uh, world confirmed cases on a linear scale. Um, and so there's all kinds of plots here. Um, you know, we can go up to the top here. COVID-19 worldwide growth rates. If you just Google this, you can find it, um, or you can just freeze the video and, and uh, get the link from here, or go to Twitter and get the link. So it's all these different countries. So. So this again is the 35% daily increase rate, and this is the 22% um, daily increase. And you can see, you know, Italy's right along that line. Spain, France, Germany, UK, Netherlands, they're all coming up here. You know, a lot of them are following this trajectory, this 22% daily increase. Do, taking no action, you get at least this. You know, when you do a lot of, st start doing social distancing, shutting things down, you can bring it down to 22 in many countries, um, and even lower, uh, you know, as China did. I mean, we all have to become China in the next little while. Um, this is cases per million inhabitants, so per capita, it's the same data, but per capita. And there's cases for, you know, this is European countries, you know, Italy, the Lombardy region, Switzerland, Austria, you know, so you can look on here and see how many days you are behind, um, Italy in your particular country. This is, you know, Greece, Poland, Czech Republic, etc. Canada is on one of these. I just want to point that out. This, this is if you don't have a, a, a log on this axis, you get the exponential growth. So when you plot it on a, on a log, semi, this is called a semi-log plot. This axis is on the log scale and this one is a linear scale. So it linearizes the curve and the exponential looks linear and that way you can compare slopes and things a lot easier. Um, okay, so there's loads of data here and you can see the countries, you know, you can see Singapore here is the green one. You can see Japan here. You can see the countries uh, that are doing uh, South Korea. You look at South Korea. Okay, so that's flattened out here. So you can see the countries that are really treating this you know, really ready and doing amazing things. And, you know, we can try to emulate their, their successes. And again, this um, temperature dependence for warm countries seems to be there, needs to be confirmed with more data. And uh, I just wanted to remind you, this is my website, paulbeckwith.net. So please check it out. Please consider donating to support my work. And I just want to end on this. Anti-inflammatories may aggravate the uh, COVID-19 if, if you get ill. So basically you want to take um, a s no, straight normal aspirin, acetaminophen, or Tylenol because they reduce fevers without counteracting the inflammation. They don't make it worse, they help. Thanks for listening.